Barbell deadlifts, barbell squats, overhead press, lat pull down, chest press. And when you're ready to stop, repeat. That's how we climb Olympia. When you push that extra rep, when you pull another set, when you lift that one last rep, you will climb the mountain and no one will forget. Bring on the build with the NASM Physique and Bodybuilding Coach Program. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about anatomical directions and planes of motion. This is just a quick and a relatively short review of anatomy when it comes to figuring out what are anatomical directions and what are these planes of motion. So many of you will already be familiar with these, so you'll probably still like it as a review, but for some of y'all out there, you're like, please tell me what these are because I'm having a hard time and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So let's get into some of the anatomical directions. I, I think some of the easier ones that you may know just because they tend to show up in language would be anterior and posterior. So anterior being the front and posterior being the back. And I will say this, it's a little bit different than ventral and dorsal, because ventral and dorsal tend to be used on uh, animals that are longer, right? So like a dog or a horse, where the, the or, or a better yet, like a, like a dolphin, there is a dorsal fin, an orca, there is a dorsal fin. But if they stood upright, then it would probably be a posterior fin. So that's just kind of a difference between how we usually speak about these. Like dorsiflexion, if you look at the foot, the top part of the foot is the dorsum of the foot because that is kind of a, a along the line of the, the horizon, the way that the body of a, a horse or a orca or a dolphin would be. And so that would have a dorsum portion to it. So dorsiflexion in the ankle would be flexion, the decrease in angle between two bones around the joint. So it would be flexion of the foot up towards the shin bone. All right, gotten to the weeds already. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just trying to anatomical directions. Stay, stay within the lane. All right, uh, we can also so that's that's anterior the front, posterior is the back, and then we've got medial and lateral. Medial is toward the midline of the body. So basically, you draw a midline down the center of the front, the anterior of your body then that is the midline of the body. So anything that moves toward the midline, like if you're doing dumbbell flies, you are going towards the midline of the body. They are moving medially as opposed to lateral, which would be away from the midline of the body. I, I, I think about this in football when you kind of throw a football out to the side. And by football, I mean American football, not World Cup soccer football. Um, it, when you throw a lateral, you throw it to the side. We have lateral raises when it comes to working our deltoids, and that is moving away from the midline of the body. Well, then there's, so there's anterior and posterior, there's medial and lateral, then there's superior and inferior. Superior means toward the head. And inferior means away from the head. So if you're moving superiorly or sometimes referred to as cranial movement, you're moving towards the head. Inferior is moving away from the head. And sometimes those get confused with proximal and distal. So proximal means movement towards the center of the body and distal is away from the center of the body. So superior and inferior is often used um, on the different parts of the body than proximal and distal are. So you might have the uh, proximal and distal on the appendages and superior and inferior on the body, on the center of the body, the trunk itself. Well, then there's superficial and deep. Superficial is 
shallow or towards the surface. And we usually use superficial in, in fitness where we talk about how deep or superficial a muscle is. So a deep muscle like the transversus abdominis is very deep versus a more superficial muscle like the rectus abdominis. Uh, and so the, the direction, the, the language of how things are relative to each other is important. And there's another one, another movement direction, I think that we use pretty regularly, which would be ipsilateral and contralateral. So <clears throat> ipsilateral would be towards the, the same side. So if I'm doing, um, uh, let's say like a single leg squat and I'm holding one dumbbell, if I held that dumbbell in the same side, on the same side of the leg that's working, I might say uh, we're holding it in the ipsilateral side. And if I held the weight in the opposite hand, the hand on the other side, so contralateral, it would be my single leg lunge to balance, holding the dumbbell in the contralateral side. Also think about this with, um, with movement, anatomical movement, um, like trunk rotation. So in trunk rotation, we might say, you know, rotation to the right or rotation to the left, but oftentimes we'll use ipsilateral and contralateral. So like the external oblique on my right side rotates me left. So it is a contralateral rotation as opposed <clears throat> to the internal oblique, which rotates me towards the same side, which is an ipsilateral rotation. Interesting enough, if you've ever done crunches with rotation or done rotational movements, and you don't know which side you're supposed to feel it on because you feel it in the oblique area on both sides. That's because the external oblique on my right side, if I'm rotating left, is rotating me towards the left, the contralateral side. And my ipsilateral internal oblique is also rotating me. So the same side, my left internal oblique is rotating my trunk left. So if you're doing these exercises, you're like, I don't know which one I feel like you should be feeling it in both sides, but usually it's a bit more of a, a contralateral rotation for the external oblique and ipsilateral for the internal oblique. All right. Hope I didn't get too far in the weeds with that one. But then we can talk about planes of motion and understand where those anatomical directions may move according to a plane of motion. And those planes of motion, there are three of them, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Now, sagittal is usually just sagittal. So you may hear like anterior, post, uh, posterior plane. Uh, you might hear longitudinal plane. But when you're looking at any of the data and the content, it's almost always sagittal plane almost always. Now the frontal plane and the transverse plane have some other names that get to be used a little bit more. So the frontal plane, if you're reading, if you're reading it NASM, it's sagittal, frontal, and transverse, but, and the frontal plane is also known as the coronal plane and the transverse plane more commonly you will hear as the horizontal plane, transverse and horizontal plane uh, I, I read content and I see a lot of transverse, I see a lot of horizontals. So those are used pretty interchangeably. In fact, sometimes you'll say the transverse plane and you'll say the movement would be like horizontal AD or horizontal AB duction. You could also say transverse AB and transverse AD duction. So those movements would be the same based off the plane of motion that you're working in. All right, so let's talk about the sagittal plane briefly. The sagittal plane is the anatomical plane that divides the body into left and right sides. And you could say that it right down the middle, but there's a word for that, which is the mid sagittal plane. And that divides the sagittal plane and the right and the left side right down the middle, right down the center. That's the mid sagittal plane. So equal left and right, equal halves to the middle of the body. And the thing about the sagittal plane is that their muscles that move the body through the sagittal plane tend to be oriented vertically on the anterior front or posterior back of the body. And by doing that, it allows your body to move forward and backwards through that plane of motion. So 
when you look at kind of the the anatomy of the body, especially from the front or the back, you'll see it if you looked at the uh, at, at an anatomical figure and you're like, most of the muscles run primarily up and down on the anterior posterior of the body. And that makes sense when you consider how much movement occurs in the sagittal plane, particularly in the lower extremities and throughout the core, how many move and, and the, the extremities, the arms and the legs. So from the anatomical position, there are a lot of things that just move straight up and down. And then as you get kind of centered, you might see like the lats and the pecs and the obliques and those things move uh, glutes. They have different orientation of fiber, but they also have many times sagittal orientations as well. So an oblique orientation will move through multiple planes of motion. So a sagittal plane, divide the body into right and left sides, and that creates more of this kind of anterior to posterior movement. You follow that up with the frontal plane or the coronal plane. It is the anatomical plane that divides the body into the front and the back. So when you see the picture of the in the textbook where it's like a plane like this and it cuts the body this way. Now, the reason I say this, um, the planes of motion, people get confused with the frontal plane all the time because sagittal plane allows you to move front and back but the frontal plane doesn't. And that confuses people because you'd feel like a frontal plane would make sense if I did a front lateral, uh, a front raise with, uh, with dumbbells. So I do an a front raise from my shoulders. What plane of motion is that? It's not frontal. <clears throat> now frontal is, all right, planes of motion were really designed not for movement, which is what we use them for in, in our realm of study, but they were initially used in dissection. So if I wanted to see the front of, let's say, someone's brain, I would have to cut from left to right, right to left. I'd have to cut that way along the top of the head. I could kind of pull the front of the head off and look right at the front of the brain. Well, the line of dissection, because that's how they were initially coined through dissection, the frontal plane, the frontal dissection is the same movement pattern, the side to side movement pattern that you see in a frontal plane movement. And the ultimate frontal plane movement I think of are jumping jacks. So the arms going out to the side, up and down, legs going out to the side, in and out. That is an excellent frontal plane movement. So they're muscles that move the body through the frontal, frontal plane, and they tend to be oriented vertically on the lateral or medial sides of the body, allowing for lateral or medial movement through that plane. And then finally, you have the transverse or horizontal plane. That is the anatomical plane that divides the body into top and bottom. So when you look at that kind of 3D figure with the planes going in different places, it is the plane that goes through the abdomen transversely. It is a horizontal plane. And this, the major muscles that move the joints along this plane tend to be oriented horizontally, while others have an oblique line of pull to create rotation. And so the horizontal or transverse plane is something that allows our body to either rotate. So rotation would be an example of that. But also, um, let's do a, a, a pec fly. Right? That is the horizontal plane because it is moving along the plane that divides the body into top and bottom portions, not halves, but portions. And so if my hand were on that plane and I were just doing this right here, that would be a horizontal plane. I know you can't see it. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching on YouTube, you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't know what you're doing. Well, I'm doing a, a, a pec fly or I can do a rear delt fly and that would be a horizontal plane. But also, so would a bench press. So if I keep my elbows out to the side, kind of a typical what we think of when we do a bench press, even though a lot of times a bench press, el elbows aren't quite that far out to the side. They're usually a little bit lower. But uh, a strict horizontal plane bench press is the same joint action at the shoulder as it is a fly. 
The only thing that changes is whether or not the elbow stays straight or the elbow bends. So that is a rotation at the shoulder joint along this vertical axis, creating a rotation. And that rotation allows it to be, a, or shows it to be a horizontal or a transverse plane movement. Anyway, quick little anatomy run through when it comes to planes of motion and anatomical directions. Hope you found it helpful. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. Reach out to me if you have questions. You can hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or you can email me at rick.ritchie at nasm.org. You'll keep inspiring people to fitness. Keep doing what you're doing. Know that what you do makes people want to be more fit makes them want to move more, makes them want to be more active, not because you're forcing them to do things, but because you are having them enjoy or find pride in what they do. Because sometimes we don't enjoy it, but man, you can be very proud of the accomplishments that we do. And y'all are responsible for that when it comes to so many people. So keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.